Here we go. It is live. Okay. So, hi, guys. And uh, I have, this is Will Terry, and I've got uh, the wonderful David Bedricki. Did I say that right, David? Yes, you did. I, you coached me, I think, a couple years ago. <laughs> <That's weird. laughs> yeah, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tough last name, that's for sure. I can't, there's, I have to always look when I spell it. Well, it's Polish, you know. I know. And I, and I can't, I can't, there's no way because of the consonants together, you know. Well, my ancestors were so poor, they couldn't afford vowels. So, <laughs> you know, it's, just, it's just a bunch of consonants together. <laughs> I like to say Pedricki because it's uh, it's easier for everybody to say. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, you guys, uh, this is, you're in for a treat if you're, if you're into children's books and if you're into, um, uh, maybe possibly doing school visits or wanting to know about how to do the perfect school visit. Uh, David is the consummate expert. He won't tell you that, but I will. Um, I don't know anybody who does more school visits than he does. And so um, I consulted him because I got a letter written to me from one of our SVS students, um, Simona. And uh, and I'm actually going to be interviewing her in a couple weeks because she is a powerhouse and she is so um, interesting. And um, But she wrote a letter with, a, with some amazing questions about school visits. And I just want to read some of those. And then we're going to kind of go through that so that anybody that's looking to do a really good school visit will have kind of a little resource here. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to talk David into actually making this a class on SVS sometime in the, in the future. So we'll see if that happens. <laughs> so I'm just going to read part of this. Um, and she's, she's basically, she says, um, she got her first children's book published and, um, and now she's, she's thinking, well, I know that publishers use, um, author illustrator school visits as a promotional tool. And I'm, I'm wondering if I get asked by my publisher to go out and do those, I, I have no idea what I'm doing. And so she says, um, she says she hasn't been, I was, I was in the classroom 35 years ago but I have no clue about the logistics. And she says, I'm quite, honestly, I'm quite terrified by the prospect. So then she says, is there, <laughs> yeah, is there any resource, idealist, sample presentation or anything that can give an idea? So that's what we're going to create, hopefully right now is a little resource. Um, and she says, um, what do you talk about? How do you keep the kids interested and the teacher happy? Do you have to bring your own stack of books or just tell them where it can be bought? How about bookshops? Do you produce your own marketing material, posters, flyers? Uh, uh, I was once signing for Bats in the Beach. Oh, she's talking about Brian Lies. You know Brian? Yes, Lees. Brian yeah, Lees. Br Brett Lees, yeah. Yeah, rhymes with cheese. And, and he, she says, and I guess she saw his uh, Batmobile where he decorates yes, his Jeep. Yes. Up. And she's like, I, I, I don't think I could, I think that sets the bar a little high. How many people are doing that sort of thing? And I think, I don't know anybody that's doing that except him. I, I, uh, geez. Uh, well, actually, you know what? There are some, um, big names like, uh, who's the, Bre uh, Jan Brett. Jan Brett travels the country in a bus, uh, every once in a while. She does, I'm not sure how many school visits she does. I don't think she does very many, but, uh, her publisher actually outfitted a bus for her to travel, mm. uh, that wow. had like, uh, you know, her artwork on the outside of it. Oh my gosh. You know? Yeah, I mean, that thing was spectacular. I remember seeing it one time going down the highway. <laughs> I was like, Holy, that, that's Jan Brett, you know? Wow. So, yeah, I mean, there are some, some that do it. But I think, I think Brian, um, and he's, he's a great guy, uh, he mentioned something. I think his wife is in marketing. Uh, and they put, uh, you know, when they were producing the book, they put something together where, you know, we're going to dress up the car. And they, yeah. they got them those full car decals and, you know, put, you know, Built something on it which looked really really cool. Yeah, so yeah, it bat wings, bat big, wings. Huge. Yes, and yeah. you guys, you can Google that if you type in Brian Lee's L I. It's spelled lies L I E S, um, and Batmobile. His his Jeep will come up with bat wings on it. Yes, it's pretty cool. <laughs> he he just has a new book out now too, where he uh, he decorated up his car with uh, uh looks like a garden I think with pumpkins on it. It's called the uh, the book's called the Rough Patch. And uh, he did a uh, presentation at a local bookstore I saw, and uh, there were uh, the car was decorated up with pumpkins, and you know it, it was just very, very well done. Wow. You know? Yeah. So, but he's 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 the only one that I know who does it by himself. Everybody else who has it, uh, 
you know, who, who goes ahead and, and does it that I know, the publisher puts it together. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Cool <laughs> stuff. Yeah. All right. So let's back up just a little bit. And you are an author illustrator. Correct. And you have, you have published about how many books? Uh, about 30, I would say. 30 books. Wow. Yeah. 30 okay. Books. So you've been, you're, you're, you've been doing this for a while. Uh, yeah, about 20. Uh, let me see. Uh, well, m my books that I've been writing about uh, 15 years, mm -hmm. I became an author about 15 years ago. Before that, I was just, uh, I was just uh, illustrating for uh, just a somebody, lowly crappy. Uh, yeah, life. I was a low life illustrator. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Actually, I illustrated books for uh, somebody that you've uh, illustrated a book for, Jerry Pallotta. You, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. The uh, uh, Santa Dogs or something? Yeah, like yeah, Santa Pups, yeah. Yeah, yeah Sa Santa Pups, yeah. So he was the person who got me into the business. of. Uh, and he's a kind of another guy like you where you do. he does a lot of school visits. He does, he does even more than I do. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yes, he does, yeah, he does. He does. Wow. Uh, I remember one year he was telling me that he did over 200 schools, I'm thinking. I was thinking, Jerry, I said, how could you do 200 schools? I said, there's only 182 days in the school uh, school year. Uh, or not, is it 180? Yeah, something yeah, it's like 180, that. Yeah, 182 or something like that. And he said, well, sometimes I visit a school in the morning and a school in the afternoon. I said, oh my yeah, God. that sounds about right. Yeah. Wow. And you could do that. Yeah, so he visited over 200 schools. Wow. Yeah. And Ralph Massiello is another one, too. Ralph is, uh, Ralph is, uh, are you friends with Ralph? On, uh, no. Uh, Ralph Massiello is another person who's done some of Jerry's books, too. And, uh, he, uh, he's, I think he's, he does like the how to draw books. Oh, Ralph Massiello is how to draw like uh, Halloween, how to draw fish, how to draw bugs and stuff like that. And this guy is a nut. He goes and he, you know, he's got like this big uh, poster, uh, poster paper, you mm -hmm. know, and he'll draw, he'll, he'll wing off about 50 drawings and gives it off to the teachers, you know, you know, he leaves some for the schools. The guy is just amazing. Oh. Yeah. You know? There's just a lot of different ways that you could you could do uh, you know visits. I'll have to put a link to to him in there too because I yeah don't know. Ralph is great yeah I'll go back through but um but yeah so you um you're you're very prolific on creating but you're also extremely pr prolific in getting out to schools and you told you said you did how many school visits last year I did 116 last year 116 um, different schools uh, uh, let me see probably with with schools probably. Uh, probably over a hundred uh, with the schools and then like maybe about eight or 10 like uh, conferences that I've uh -huh. done, you know, wow. conferences and like night events and things like that. But basically over a hundred schools. Yeah. And more importantly, how many countries? Uh, <laughs> uh, last year? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, pr pretty much in the United States, but I, I was in Dubai and Africa. I was wow. in uh, uh, Zambia, uh, uh, Lusaka, Zambia. I, I visited. Uh, how how many countries would you say you visited in, in total? And since you've been doing this, uh, let me see. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, probably about eight. eight okay. Wow. Eight, yeah. Eight or so, yeah. so the, I never, I never thought that becoming an illustrator would help you see the world, but I, it, yeah, me either. <laughs> <laughs> but I've been, I've been very, very fortunate. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's. Uh, it's an experience that, uh, you know, uh, I, I never thought that I would do. And uh, yeah. apparently my name got out there that, you know, I'm able to bring something to these schools that's different than anything else that they've, that they've, you know, that they have. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you're not, uh, you're not going to make a boatload of money doing the international schools. It pretty much pays for itself and you may have a, you know, some money left over and, and things like that, but it's the experience, you know, it's just getting oh, yeah. out and, and seeing the countries and, uh, May, maybe spending a little time there afterwards or, uh, or things like that, which make it so, uh, so attractive to doing something like that. Mm -hmm. And what would you say? Um, and I, I'm just trying to get through some of this little initial information because some people don't even, some illustrators have never probably even heard that school visits are an option, but like how much money could you make low end and high end? Would you say like, and, and what do you well, think most il author illustrators are making? Uh, on average, it's it's hard for me to say. Um, I know when I first started off, I was you know um, sometimes I would just start off doing a free visit just to just to get the practice in uh, mm -hmm. to, to doing it like uh, local libraries, local mm -hmm. schools, and then um, I started uh, charging. I think initially about five hundred dollars, six hundred dollars for the day, and now mm -hmm. it's you know it's it's quite a, quite a bit more than that that I get. Mm -hmm. um, 
there there are artists uh illustrators the more popular ones who you know are getting over you know 2000 2500 a day mm -hmm. uh, up to 5000 or 8000 a day depending on who you are like a caldecott you know? winner or something like uh that. yeah probably like a caldecott winner like a uh um, a Newberry Award winner, mm -hmm. you know, those people could command those. Uh, of course, I don't, I don't have any of those awards yet. But, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> you know, the, th the thing is, uh, you know, I, I feel I feel pretty good about what I do and what I bring to a school visit. So I feel like I, I add enrichment to a school um, program when I go in. And uh, so I, I, I charge anywhere from, you know, 15 to 18 to over 2000, depending on where I am, mm -hmm. and plus travel. So um, that, that's, you know, what I travel uh, locally, I, tr I, I charge a little bit less because mm -hmm. I sleep in my own bed when I'm mm -hmm. home. So, so it's, it's no, it's, and we've talked about this before, but it's, it's, it can be a really substantial part of your income. Yes. As a matter of fact, yes. Yeah. 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 And, and, but, and, and at the same time, the reason for doing it is um, you, you really help. I mean, you really, I mean, you're, let's face it. We're in an industry where we're helping kids to read. Mm -hmm. And so you're, you're helping kids understand, uh, you know, where you're coming from and why you do what you do and, uh, the characters and all that. And yeah, you, I basically, I look at it as, um, inspiring the students to, uh, to write and to create, um, you know, you're not going to go, you're not going to go into a school and, and, and speak to each group for like 45 or 50 minutes and showing them, you know, how to write a story, um, but you could give them tools, you know, you mm -hmm. could, you could show this is the way that I create, you know, in some instances it might, you know, it might work for you. In some instances it, 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 it might not, everybody's different. Mm -hmm. But what I try to do is I try to inspire them. I try to, um, I show them, you know, the basics of, you know, how an idea gets turned into a story, how it just starts off with like a little idea seed. And I, I take that and I show them the progression of it and how it gets turned into a story. Now, what I do is I, I, I have a lot of humor in it. You know, you have to keep it funny. You have to keep the kids engaged. Uh, I've got um, I got a screen in back of me usually, which is, you know, got some stuff, you know, flashing up on it. Uh, some of my drawings. And uh, I also show like little movies of things being created. Mm -hmm. um, I, I narrate uh, I, I'll narrate a story afterwards, showing them how I took that idea. You know, all the, the uh, progressions that I went to 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 create that story with a lot of humor in it. And then I'll narrate the story to them. Uh, afterwards are you are you using like an ipad to show the movies and the all the things um i use a uh i, I use a uh, mac uh, um uh, a macbook uh, okay. most of the time i've had i've had an old one like a a, a, <laughs> a mac g4 <laughs> <laughs> that i just gave up last year and that, that thing has been with me for like uh, about 13 years i just took it all over the world with me and uh -huh. it's so it's so reliable and I always know what I have with it. Uh, but I, I do run it off of there. And then I, um, uh, I actually, I actually draw, do a, do a quick drawing for them using the computer. So uh, I start off with, I, I do something very, very simple that they could actually go and, and draw afterwards using a computer or some gaps that they have. So, so specifically you're drawing on what, what, what are you doing? Uh, well, I have a, um, a Wacom tablet that I use. Oh, okay. Yeah, you so bring the you bring out the heavy equipment. You no iPad for you, right? Uh, <laughs> I, I don't feel comfortable yet. And one of these days, I'll probably run it off of my iPad. Okay, so I, I don't feel comfortable with it yet. I, I yeah. um, you know, the the thing is like, uh, hook, like I do have a little bit of music on my on my presentation, hooking that up to my projector because I bring my own projector too. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, with the uh, uh, the projector, I I always um, I've used projectors at schools before, and they're always hit or miss. So I just went out and invested in a, in a good um, a projector, like a 40, 4,500 lumen projector. Oh, wow. So, so you, you know, take your own projector cause you don't, you don't, uh, you're tired of re relying on the school to screw. Absolutely. Over. Yeah. yeah. You know what you got, you know how to set it up <laughs> and you, you, you just eliminate that stress that you have because you know, it is, you know, every, every day is different and you want to yeah. make sure that at least in part of it, you know that your equipment's going to work and how it's going right. to be able to function. So that's very, very important because a lot of times, <laughs> yeah, a lot of times with the uh, presentations, you know, there's 200, 300 kids yeah. in a room and you got to. Oh yeah. And it gets, it, you start feeling the heat in your face when oh. the technology is letting you down. I know this. <laughs> like I, I'm an, I'm a school 
school visit novice, but I've done probably 30 or 40 of them. And I've yeah. done enough to know that like the, <laughs> the people at the school don't really care if you crash and burn. No, you know, like they're like, oh yeah, I think we have a, a projector around here somewhere. It's uh, kicking they, around. They bring it out from the uh, from the closet. They, <laughs> we blow it off. Okay, I think we can yeah. hook it up to here. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't work. Right. Um, well, you you can just do something else, can't you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, it's you know, but my uh, uh, my my uh, program is very uh, visual intensive. You know, because that's how I grab the students right from the get go. I I play like little movies at the beginning of my presentation with with music and with a, a drawing happening in front of them so you get them right from the get-go mm -hmm. and if i don't have that you're basically standing up in front of a group of 300 kids and what are you <laughs> going to do hold a book up you know that they can't even see you know that's that's tough yeah there are people who could do that though you know there yeah. are people who have like an amazing presence and a yeah. booming voice like ralph massiello ralph massiello could get up in front of a a, a, a group of kids without a microphone and wow. just slay them. I mean, he is just, he, wow. he, and he'll just tell stories, you know, or you, you, there, there's a uh, woman from uh, Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, what is her name? She's a great storyteller. She, she just get up and just talk to the kids and, and, and they're, she'll have them in the palm of their, their hands, you know, and me, I, wow. I need all the, I need all the technology. You know, I need, I need something behind me where, you know, I could say, here you go. It, you know, just move, you know, move around and stuff like that. That's, that's the way I am, you know, but some people are just great storytellers. They've got great booming voices. I'm not that I, I, I really rely on my technology. Right. Right. Yeah. Are those cicadas that I'm hearing in the background? There's something out there. I don't know what it... the, the oh, locusts. Oh. It sounds like it. <laughs> it could be. Yeah. I think it is a cicada. Cause I grew up, grew up back East and it's, and I'm like, I'm hearing back East sounds right there. Yeah. yeah it's a cicada. It's probably, uh, just came out. Uh, yeah. we hear them at night a lot here yeah. and, uh, yeah, that probably was a cicada. Good, yeah. good, good ears there, Will. Good ears. Good, good mic. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so logistically, um, there's some stuff I want to hit, which is um, uh, let's let's talk a little bit about before the school visit. How you like? What kind of prep work are you doing to communicate back and forth with the school to make sure that you know? And I know we're not going to be able to hit all this because it's pretty complicated. The the, uh, the 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 things that you have to do, but if you want to give your best uh, stab at like how you well, work yeah. with school. Well, for, first of all, you know, usually you're, uh, you're in touch with a school uh, months, months in advance. Mm -hmm. Like right now I'm making plans or actually not me anymore. My wife has taken over for me. Mm -hmm. uh, she's, uh, she's handling all my, uh, my bookings for me and she's doing a terrific job by the way. Uh, so we're making plans for the spring mm -hmm. and uh, what will happen is the school will contact you and, uh, you, you, you agree on a, a fee, you know, some schools have more money than other schools. So mm -hmm. you, uh, uh, especially, uh, you know, you, you don't want to, uh, especially in my case, I don't want to, you know, not do it because the money is, is not comparable to the other schools, but you know, you just want to get out there and do as much as you can. So anyway, basically you set that up and then beforehand, uh, you know, maybe, uh, like a week or so, uh, bef before the visit, you make sure that, you know, um, the, you know, you, you get a schedule from them mm -hmm. a week or two, you know, you're, you're going to look at it and say, okay, I have to, uh, uh, I'm going to have four presentations. Uh, they're going to probably be, I usually block off an hour for each presentation. So you got to get everybody in, do the presentation, answer questions, get everybody out, bring the next group in. So you have to figure out you know, what you're, what you feel comfortable in doing. Some, uh, some authors will only do up to, uh, three presentations or some will only do two presentations a day. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, you know, doing four presentations is it's it's a, a little tough. Yeah. You're, 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 you're toast by the end of it. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you, you, you work all at that stuff. And, um, uh, you know, when I usually like to arrive at the school, uh, about an hour before I present, mm -hmm. because sometimes you'll go into a, uh, uh, a room that they're going to have you in and the windows need to be covered up a little bit. I was going to mention that because that's like, to me, that's my biggest nightmares. I've, I've done a few and you couldn't see the screen, even with sure. a, pro a decent projector. And they're like, yeah. Oh yeah, those windows, we, we've always had those windows. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's another thing that you, uh, uh, you know, that you put in uh, at, um, uh, when you're initially, you know, setting it up like uh, months in advance. You say, I, I do need a room that could be darkened. 
uh, I'll uh, need a microphone. That's one of the things that I, I like to have mm -hmm. these days, especially if you uh, like if you have 30 kids in the room, you, you don't really need a microphone. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, if you have close to like, you know, 70 or 100 kids, you want a microphone. Definitely. You want to be able to, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, audibly control the room. And with, mm -hmm. which you need to do sometimes at least i need to control it so i, I do need a microphone um and i bring the rest of my equipment i bring my laptop i bring my walking tablet i bring my projector and i set that all up and i make sure that everything's all ready you get the uh you know i get everything all ready to go and then you know the students come in and that's uh, that's how i go about doing it um you know there's other questions that you may have too about like books yeah uh, like do you send out an order form i know some authors do that yeah, yeah. We uh, so, sometimes the uh, the school will uh, work with a uh, bookstore. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times, and uh, a lot of times the bookstores work in conjunction with the school uh, because they have book fairs. Um, sometimes, if if an author is on tour, um, sometimes they'll get an author for free mm -hmm. because you know they'll have a book tour in a certain area, and they'll be able to get an author for maybe one presentation or something like that. So uh, the the bookstore will supply the uh, the books, uh, and and I I don't like to um, I don't I don't discourage that because you know frankly it's the school's relationship with the with the bookstore that is important to the school. Mm -hmm. So I don't I don't say well no I'm not going to present unless you know I sell my own books, but I do leave the option open to to sell my own books too. So that's something that um, uh, you know helps every once in a while too. It's a little bit of uh, extra money. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you, um, you, the logistics, you got to make sure that the books get to the school. You got to make sure you got the right orders, things like that. So it is, it is a little bit extra work, but those are things that, um, you know, I find to, to help to when you, when you do a school visit. Right. Right. It, it, it's, it's like anything. It's like the more preparation you put into it, the better it's probably yes. going to be. Pulled. And I think another um, thing that, to keep in mind, if you're, if you're thinking about doing a school visit is most of the schools have, this isn't their first rodeo. So they're, they, they know pretty much how to make these things happen for the most part. Right. Um, in, in, I'd say about, um, I'd probably say about 60% of the cases. Yeah. They've had authors in there before mm -hmm. 60, 70%. But, you know, sometimes like, a, like this past year, I probably had about 20 people who I've, I've been their first author that they wow. brought in. Yeah. So, you wow. know, they're, and they're nervous, you know, they're <laughs> right. sometimes, talking to a PTO person. Sometimes you're talking to a, a librarian. It depends on who the contact person is. You know, usually like the PTO people, they're, they're only helping the school out for a little bit as their kids are going through. Mm -hmm. And maybe one of the things that they're asked to do is to bring an author in. So they're not really sure of how to, you know, the, the whole procedure. So a lot of times, you know, you gotta, uh, you gotta educate them, uh, you know, how, you know, how, how, how to go about doing it, uh, mm -hmm. how many presentations you want to do, where the kids are going to be set up. Uh, where you're going to be set up, what you're going to need, those things that, you know, you could, you could probably put together in a, um, in a form, in a form mm -hmm. letter so that, you know, when, when the opportunity happens where you do get the visit, all you do is just take the information and just put it right into the email and send it off to them. Mm -hmm. it, it, it is a thing of trial and error. You know, it, mm -hmm. it is, it's, it's the type of thing where um, every school is different um, and it's uh, uh, making sure that you, when you get to the school, you're prepared. You're prepared. You're ready to go, and that you you know that the room that you're going to be in is all ready to go too. That's that's the most important thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah so so the more you um, you think it through, or I guess even though we're doing this broadcast, there's no substitute for actually doing it right I'm, and making the mistakes. No, and going, no, oh. yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, it, it's it's good to. Uh, uh, it, eventually you're going to find your own voice, you know, just like you do in your artwork, you know, yeah. with, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, from doing it over and over again, you're going to develop a style. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's, it, it's the, the practice. It's, uh, um, you know, you're doing the same presentation or variations of the same presentation over and over and over again. So you know what's going to engage students. And that's the key thing is that mm -hmm. you, you have to engage students these days. Mm -hmm. You also have to talk about, um, things that maybe is going on in the curriculum. Like take, for instance, like uh, most of the time in second grade, they're studying bugs. You know, there's a, there's a section on bugs. So mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I've done a, a book about a bug detective. So I throw little things in about that. I draw a beetle for the students when I'm, 
when I actually sit down and do a drawing um, using my, my computer. So I talk about beetle biology, what, what separates a beetle from a bug. You know, I talk about symmetry. I talk about uh, uh, I, I talk about uh, opposite uh, colors and primary colors, things that they learn about in school. But you're reinforcing it right in front of them as you're drawing a picture. Mm -hmm. And you also have to throw humor into, you know, you can't be dry. You, you have to be. So, excited. so what do you say to the person who's who's uh, scared? Like, were, were you a natural at it in the beginning? Were you? Hell no. No. OK. No. No, I was, I, I put kids to sleep when I first started presenting, <laughs> you know, kids used to start throwing stuff at me, you know, it was, it was, just, it was like, I, I, you know, I, I, uh, when I first started off in the business, um, doing children's books, I was just illustrating for Jerry Pilata. So he lived close by. So I used to tag along with him to a school visit and Jerry does his, uh, he does it a, a lot different than what I do, but I noticed his humor the way that he related to the kids. I noticed how he uh, uh, kept their attention. I noticed that he shifted around a lot. He, he moved around. He, he, uh, he did things uh, that were uh, nobody else was doing. You know, he would get a, he would get a skull mm -hmm. of like an animal. Right. And he'd call a kid up to the front of the, of the room. Right. And he, if the kid had a hood on, right. You have the kid put the hood over his head and he put the skull underneath the hood. So you couldn't see the kid's face. But you can see the skull up there, right? And <laughs> he would score on it. And, you know, he would make it. You know, he would talk to the kids. You know, with the with the skull on his head. So uh -huh. there are things like you know, you have like audience participation. There's uh, there's a lot of things that you do to 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 engage students. But uh, yeah, so it's <laughs> it's it's, it, it's whatever works for you. And and like you just said, it's it's trials and tribulations. Yeah. It's getting out there and and doing it over and over again until you one get of the it. one of the big mistakes I made, and I still. I still do this because I I don't because I don't do them a lot. I have to relearn the same lessons. <laughs> one of the one of the big mistakes I make is I'll I'll treat them like my college students, and I'll just throw out a question sometimes, and then yes. you, you know you start getting answers that are like they're not only in left field. But sometimes they're like, well, you know, my my dad got mad at my mom, and you're like, uh, oh, stop, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's uh. You know, I, I do have a Q and A uh, uh, period at the end where I I, uh, I usually bring the students up uh, to the microphone because mm -hmm. uh, you know a lot of times I I mean it's really funny when 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 kids ask you a question they'll be like way off in the you know in the middle of the room and they'll raise their hand and they'll speak to you like this and they say Mr. Pedricki if I were to and you can't right. hear and you can't I, hear so, them, right. so I said forget about it I'll just bring everybody up right so you, you go and you choose a couple kids or you have the teacher choose a couple kids uh -huh. and you bring them up so th that's you know and you know that they'll ask you I mean you know they ask me how old I am you know they ask me you know is uh you know th they'll, they'll ask you how much you weigh yeah. <laughs> 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 what's your favorite color you know, a lot of times they have very insightful questions too. Things uh -huh. that you, you know, things that'll will, will make you pause. You're thinking like, "Wow, this kid is really, he's putting this all together out there." You know, when when yeah. you're talking about it. So there's a, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of great interaction that I love and and uh, that I derive from a school visit. That's mm -hmm. uh, that's another thing. Besides, you know, making it part of my income, it's part of my inspiration too. Because mm. uh, a lot of times when I'm uh, visiting a school, I have a certain program that I, I go through, but I always throw something up there, up on the screen, like an idea that I'm working on. Mm -hmm. And you'll see if, if it resonates with, with the students. So if a drawing that you're putting up there is like all of a sudden the kids look at it and they are just like, whoa, this is awesome. You know that you got something. You know, yeah. you know right from the get, I mean, you got your captive audience right there. You know that, okay, I could take this and I could build on that. And that's, that's invaluable to me. That's something that I, I look upon and I say, you know what? I, won't, I don't get this by sitting in my office and creating. Right. I get this from doing a live performance, talking to students, justifying an idea, standing in front of them and making it accessible to them. And that's something that uh, is, it, it, I, I love doing. I, I do it all the time. And it's something that really inspires me. So when I go back to my office or back to my hotel room, I say, hey, they like this. I'm just going to add something more to it. So the next time you show, you show the stuff that you added, you know, and sometimes, yeah. it, you know, it, it crashes, you know, but then sometimes it, it continues and then you build upon it. And that's, that's what I do. You know, I, I, yeah. I build upon my ideas with, with, with students. 
Yeah, because it's it's like an evolution of of your. I, I notice that my presentations are constantly evolving. Like, well, this worked, but that this might be yeah. better. I'll try this. It's it's in some ways, isn't it? Like, kind of like a stand up routine for a comedian. I mean, yes, it is. You you're part comedian. You're part comedian. You're you're part uh, educator. Uh -huh. uh, you're you're part. Um, uh, yeah. Well, you know, I can't sing. There are some uh, authors out there who could sing very well. <laughs> Steve Swinberg uh, brings a ukulele with him, and I I, I can't play ukulele, wow. but uh, he brings a ukulele with him. But yeah, it, it's it's part of that, but it's also part of um, you know uh, uh, you know I, I I tell kids I say you know what I, I show them where I get ideas from, and I said. A lot of times I get ideas from students like you and, and, and then at the end, then all, all of a sudden you see all these light bulbs go off. So sometimes at the end, when they're asking you questions, they're giving you ideas for stories too. Oh. You know, they're saying, why don't you have blah, 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 do the blah, 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 you know? And it, it's all of a sudden it's like a, uh, it's like a, a symbiotic relationship. You know, you're mm -hmm. giving them, you know, information, but they're also giving you ideas. Like so a focus that, group, focus group with your audience. Absolutely. Yeah. And captive audience too. They can't leave the room. You know? right. <laughs> They're not going anywhere. <laughs> yeah. That is, and that's another thing that's, that's kind of funny is like if you were doing stand up, actual stand up for adults, you know, you'd, you'd, you'd go in the room and, you know, at first people are going to be kind of like, well, I don't, I don't know if you're good. But when you go into a, a, a group of, uh, you know, an elementary school, they're excited, even like it, it could be the janitor that was getting up to, to give a presentation. They're going to be cheering, right? So janitors have a lot of respect <laughs> at, at schools. The custodians, the custodians really uh, nail it. They really, yeah. really kids. Uh, kids are always fond of the. <laughs> but you know what, too? It's also um, in, in uh, it, it's also the uh, the teachers and the librarians who generate uh, a lot of the excitement. You know, um, when I first started off, you know, I was you know, I was just, you know, illustrating stories for Jerry Pallotta, but then I started writing my own stories. And then, you know, you go to a school and all of a sudden you're walking in and there's all your characters all over the hall. Yeah. You know? They have like, uh, I, I was at a school in uh, this Northwestern elementary out in Pennsylvania last year, or the year before in their lobby, they had cutouts, like, you know, six foot cutouts of uh, Motham city from Ace Lace Wing Bug Detective. They had, they had a dragon that was um, uh, eight feet long that was made by a parent. She sewed it together and it was stuffed and it was hanging from like the, 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 the foyer down. I mean, it was, it was oh my beautiful. God. And it looked just like the dragon from my, uh, my book. And you walk in and you are floored by the excitement that these schools are generating. You know, they want the students to be excited. They do yeah. the, Some schools do this once a year where they bring an author in and they just go crazy. And you, you, you go to those schools and you are just, you, you know, you feel like, yeah. wow, I have arrived. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're king but, for the day for sure. Oh, it's a, you're a rock star. You're basically yeah. a rock star. Yeah. And uh, that, that gets a little heady every once in a while, you know? Yeah. Especially when I go home and, you know, my wife says, hey, clean the litter box. You yeah, know? exactly. Like, Wait, <laughs> you have not seen me woman earlier today. <laughs> I, if you want me to clean the no way I will clean the litter box. You know? <laughs> I had them in the palm of my hand, you know. <laughs> but it's yeah. So that, that that's the type of thing where you know it's uh, it's very it's a very rewarding um, uh, profession. It is. It's it's uh, it's something that I don't think I could create books without doing school visits. I really don't think I could do it. It's, yeah. it, it's part of it. It's it's part of the process that I go through to create something. That's cool. So you you were nervous in the beginning, not nervous at all when you get out there now. I'm no, I'm nervous all, all the time. You so are. You always get butterflies. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. You know, it, it, the butterflies are usually in the first presentation at the yeah. beginning. Of the day. But I'll do. You know, I'll be I'll be at a uh, in a city for or at a location doing different schools for a week, and it's always the first presentation. Yeah. That's always the toughest. And don't yeah. and I and I'm in exactly the same way. So. I just assume that when you did, when you've done hundreds of them, you kind of, but you know, um, Barbara Streisand said she never got over butterflies either. So, no, no. so I, it, I think that's a normal human thing. And I think, I think we tend to think that, uh, a lot of our entertainers are just, uh, super comfortable, but no, it's, uh, you know, I, I know, um, and, and two, uh, you know, when you're, when you're coming out and you're presenting, you know, you're ramping up, your body's ramping up to present, you know, you're projecting your voice, you're, uh, 
uh, you, you, you're looking the kids in the eyes, you're scanning the room, you're, you're, you're getting, you're, you're trying to be energetic, engaging. And those are things that, you know, get you going too. you know, like mm -hmm. sometimes I'll, I'll sweat when I'm up there, you know, I feel like James Brown up there, you know, where I'm just, you know, uh, like in the spotlight. So yeah, I do, I do get, I do get nervous. I do get, um, I do get ramped up, but it's something that, uh, it happens and it's probably always going to happen for me. Hmm. Yeah. Well, that's good to know. And I think that probably makes people feel more comfortable that it's, uh, you know, we, we tend to fear the unknown, but I mean, um, you, you, there's a, I guess you can get comfortable to a certain extent, but you're never going to be, you know, I, I'm sure there are some people that, that don't care at all and like whatever, but most of yeah. us probably. Yeah. Yeah. You want, you, you always want to, um, you always want to do a good job and you always want to, um, um, well, at least in my case, I, I, um, I value the people that, uh, bring me into their schools. You know, they're, mm -hmm. um, they, they, it's, it's not, um, easy to bring an author in, you know, they have to raise funds to bring you in. They're right. putting a lot into it and you, you go there and you, you realize that, you know, you better do a good job. You better do a good job because, uh, these people have put a lot into it. Plus your reputation too. You know, you want to, you want to go in there and make sure that, you know, they'll, they'll send off something on a listserv or on Twitter or, or something say, Hey, we had this guy at our school today. He did a terrific job. He engaged our students. He, he was energetic. He, he talked about all the things that we talk about, uh, in, in school, you know, he touched on these different things mm -hmm. and, uh, that's, you know, those are the things that are very important to me, you know, also getting a good night's sleep before you. <laughs> before you present you know I, i'm in bed like 8 30 9 o'clock at night before i go to a school and yeah just, i'm out you know what do you and uh, this is a question that i have is what do you do when they send you home they, have they ever sent you to your hotel room with a, a bunch of books a stack of books to sign oh yeah i get the books delivered to my uh to my uh room yeah and then how do you get like that takes a while to get through yeah yeah it's part of it it's part it's part of it yep so you just try to yeah. get on that and then get on it. Yeah. It, it's, um, you know, a lot of people, um, well, you know, I talked to uh, some other authors about this and, you know, everybody's different. Every, every author, every illustrator is different, what, whatever they feel comfortable in doing. Mm -hmm. And some, uh, some, uh, I, I think generally by nature, uh, artists are pretty much introverted. You know, mm -hmm. they're, mm -hmm. they're people who, you know, just don't get out and are, um, advocates for themselves or, um, you know, uh, very uh, gregarious, you know, some are, I mean, some, some could really do it. Uh, but the thing is, you know, you have to have a lot of energy to do it too. Yeah. Oh you know, yeah. you got, you know, you're, you're traveling, you're, you know, you're, you're flying here, you're flying there. You're, uh, uh, you know, you're doing presentations afterwards. Sometimes at a school, I'll be at the school till six o'clock at night signing yeah. books, you know? And then how do you, what do you, I know you've gotten sick out there. How do you handle that? Like, not that often. No, no. I, I really watch what I eat. That's and, good. And then in the summer, I, I go home and I, I try to lose some weight. You know? <laughs> I've, I've lost 10 pounds since uh, uh, since the middle of June. Oh, good. So, uh, you know, trying to get back into fighting shape, you know, because when you're on the road, it's really hard to uh, uh, it's, it's hard to eat right. So you try to yeah. um, uh, you try to uh, make sure that you make good decisions for uh, uh, for dinner, you know, yeah. usually breakfast, uh, lunch. You know, I don't I don't eat school lunches that much. You know, I'll, I'll, yeah. have them, I'll have them get me a salad, you know, go, you know, somebody will yeah. order a salad for you and they'll bring a salad for you, yeah. you know? So those are things. So the only thing basically you have to really worry about is, uh, you know, a dinner and, yeah. and uh, sometimes that could be a little tough to finding a, a good restaurant somewhere. Yeah. You know? But, um, yeah. Um, have I ever gotten stuck on the road? I've been, you know, I felt all under the weather on the road. That's you know, mean kind of run down where your voice is scratchy and you get my voice gets uh, yeah my voice gets hoarse yeah it does yeah. that's why I request a microphone that's one thing that you uh, you you probably want to consider too because you know when you're when you're presenting you're you're talking for um, uh, you know in some cases fifty minutes at a time you said fifty or fifteen fifty five zero 50, yeah yeah five zero you're talking you know and. Um, you know, you're talking, 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 and then another group will come in. And so uh, some days you, between, you know, talking to everybody and schmoozing with everybody, you're talking for, for about five hours a day. Yeah. That's a, that's a toll on your, your voice. So yeah. you, um, you really got to take good care of your voice. Um, you got to take, uh, drink a lot of water, um, eat well, you know, get, get yeah. good sleep. That's important is the sleep part. Yeah. You know, get to bed at a good time.
That's okay, so when you're doing your presentations, you you've got you know you got the kindergartners, you got the first graders, second graders, and and they're like, you know, they're just like, oh, this we're in the cafeteria, and then you have yeah. you know the third and fourth, and then you have your fifth and sometimes sixth graders. Do you change up your presentations for each one, each group? Um, it's yeah, a, a little bit, a, a little bit. I do. I, I know. I, I I've known from experience that you know, you could pretty much do the same presentation to a kindergartner as you could to like a fourth grader, but you don't go into a great depth as, as far as what, you know, you're, you're not talking about revisions, uh, you know, that much to the kindergarten. You'd say, I make mistakes and who do I have? I have my editor her, you know, it's like you flash yeah. a picture of your editor and she sends me back the, you know, the corrections. And, uh, you know, this is, this is where I go with it. And you just, you just show them a little bit of the process. You can't, you know, cause their eyes will glaze over, you know, yeah. that's something you don't want to do. And so you can I, tell, and it's scary when you start to lose them. Oh, that's, that's one of my <laughs> biggest fears is losing an audience. And I've, I have lost audiences in the past and it's not, it's not pleasant, you know, and kids are, kids are a lot um, uh, harder to engage these days. I've noticed because I've been doing this for uh, probably about almost 20 years, I would say I've been mm -hmm. visiting schools. Kids these days are a lot different. You know, life, life comes at them very fast with video games and, and TV and uh, everything. And you've got to, uh, you know, you've got to get their attention and you got to hold yeah. it for 50 minutes. And a lot of times that's, it's not the easiest thing to do. So what would you say are the best ways to, keep their attention uh we probably talked about some of this already but <laughs> what are like what are like two or three for you must must include in your presentation first of all you you um you you have to uh have humor not not a lot of humor i mean you can't you can't get them to the point where they're just like you know falling up you know banging you know banging off the walls yeah. but humor is something to engage them you got to get them to believe in you you got to get them to uh, uh, to to see where you're coming from, and you also um, have to personalize your um, your presentation. Like I, you know, I, I bring in like my my um, uh, I, I show pictures of uh, like uh, inspirations for some of my stories, like my cat. You know, my cat is my cat is actually Sumo Kitty. You know, mm -hmm. so I say, you know, here, where did I get the idea? Well, look at this. I, I show him a picture of my cat <laughs> from the back. I, he's he's like he's shaped like this, you know, and I said. My neighbor looked at him one day and says, you know what? Socks is starting to look like a sumo wrestler. And boom, there's my idea, you know? And, the, and then, so you do, you show the drawings that you did to get to sumo kitty. And then you talk about, well, okay, I got a cat that looks like a sumo wrestler. I got to find out what sumo wrestlers are about. So, you know, you show, you show like little video clips of a sumo wrestler. You show them what they eat, you know? Mm -hmm. You show them how they eat, sleep, wrestle. Eat, sleep, wrestle. Eat, sleep. That's what they do. You know, that's how they get big. That's how they, you know, that's how they get where they are. So you, you get them, the, you get, you show them the backstory of something, of something that you're creating. Mm -hmm. And you make it fun. You make it engaging. You make it fast. You got to, I know with my presentations, I move on from one thing. You know, it's like one thing, boom, 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 boom. You got to, you got to move it on. And, and that's something that, because they're afraid that they're going to lose out on something. Mm. If you if you stand up there and you're in a monotone voice and you're going very slow and <laughs> this is my drawings and here's my sketches and here's a sloppy copy and you're going to lose them. You're going to yeah. lose them. You got to make it you got to make it fun and you got to make it exciting. And a lot of the school uh, librarians and teachers have exam they can tell you of people who came in and just lost it. Like, Oh yeah. yeah. Yes, like, they, yes. or, some that's, people, or some people who haven't been very nice to them either. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah that, I mean, that's, they say, you know, <laughs> after this person was here, my principal says no more author visits. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. But, so you, you also want to uh, go uh, to the school and, and make it a point where you leave the school and everybody is like excited and inspired. That's, that's, that's what my job is. You know, it's to inspire the students to go back and create and write and put pictures together with their words. That's right. that's one of the things that I like to do. You right. know, and if you if you do that, if you get emails afterwards and everybody's excited, you know, they they're sending drawing. They, you know, I got a uh, let me see. Oh, what, look at this over here. Uh, let me bring it over to you. Uh -huh. I just got this like um, last week. Right, this is a. This is a binder I got from a school. Oh, look at, look at this thing. I mean, I don't know if you could see it there. But yeah. Oh yeah. It's huge. 
it's there's like everybody in the school sent me something like every kids are t- thank you for coming you know we got little drawings they're giving me suggestions wow and uh, you know trying to hook me up with their grandmother it's just like little <laughs> here. you know and, and you get those from the school you know and you see the you know thank you mr Bedricki, and you know drawings that they're they put together and you know like stuff like this you know it's just great you get stuff back from them and you know that they've listened to you that you know that they've they're they're inspired by what you brought to the school mm-hmm. and uh they, they definitely um they notice a, an uptick in uh creativeness after you leave at the school you know they notice that you, you'll get something back from them say you've you've inspired this kid here's a kid who was a very reluctant writer and a reader and now he's he's creating his own stories or they're creating their own stories and they're drawing pictures and and they've never done that before so those are the type of things where you know you feel like you've you've done a good job you know that's awesome yeah it's it we we are lucky that we are in a in a field where we can be really proud of what we what we leave in the world aren't we yes yes it is yeah (laughs) i mean i just feel i feel lucky and very fortunate to be able to do that um another question that I had when I first started and I, I kind of am reading it into her letter a little bit here too, is um, can you talk a little bit about man, the, the actual management of the students versus like, well, like, uh, I don't know how to ask this when I, let me just say when I, when I uh, went and did a school visit, I was told um, by the way, cause I, I was like, I'm new, you know, and they mm-hmm. said, by the by the way, I got some coaching from one of the teachers who said, you need to manage the students. Don't expect the teachers to do the discipline. Like, Oof. That's a that's a tough one. It's um, you know, so, so sometimes you know you'll have um, you have students that they'll put in front. <laughs> it's, always, it's always these kids who I would have been know. one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, probably. Yeah, it's these kids who just have a hard time sitting through uh, whatever you're doing, and uh, or they're very vocal, you know. Yeah. I mean, or or they have their own agenda, you know. That's the thing, you know. You have some of them who have their own agenda where they're they're just talking through what you're doing. So uh, what I try to do is what I said before is you you keep it moving, you keep the presentation moving, and sometimes I'll just talk over them, and eventually they're they're watching. You know, they're, they're yeah, you eventually you, you catch them up in what you're doing. Right. Mm-hmm. But some schools you go to and the teachers are right on them. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the the, um, the students, um, they know how to operate in a group environment mm-hmm. uh, and they're good and they're 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 great. And, you, you know, you go there and you you you're able to do your full presentation. Uh, everybody's happy. You get great questions at the end. But sometimes you'll go to a school too, where you know the kids just don't know how to op- uh, operate in a group environment, and mm-hmm. that could be tough. That could be really, really tough. I don't get many of those. Um, you know, I'll probably get maybe a handful of those a year. Maybe about uh, out of like a hundred, maybe about five percent uh, mm-hmm. of the schools. You know, where you go and it's like you, you know you're walking around there, you got a headache. It's a different chemistry, isn't it? It is. It is a different in chemistry. School. Yeah. Um, but but I guess what I'm saying is uh, uh, I was told that sometimes the teachers are reluctant to step in because they feel like they're stepping on your toes and you've got the microphone. Right. So I, 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 I'm, I'm still baffled on that one. Like, you know, like so I've been told that some authors are really good at just managing the whole thing and then yeah, you, you learn, you know, sometimes if a kid's really, uh, you know, just driving you crazy, I'll just like put the microphone behind my back and go over and whisper something into his ears, you know, into their uh-huh. ear or, you know, and say, look, you don't want to sit with your teacher, do you? And the kid will just be like this, you know, so, and it's like, okay. okay, so let's keep it down a little bit. And, and then they're fine. You know, they're fine. Sometimes huh. they just, uh, they'll just need a little attention here or there. Yeah. Um, you know, it's... Um, yeah, I, I'm going to say that you you will run into that. You will run into those uh, those things where you know, especially when the groups get big, um, there there will be kids who have you know they're very vocal, and the teachers will just be back there not doing anything about it. And um, it's it's a tough uh, it's a tough call. Um, it's uh, something where you you kind of ramp up your presentation. Then you know you mm-hmm. you really go into uh, you know, being uh, in vocal command over everything and just, you know, making sure that you got them laser focused, you know, you make sure you, you bring out all the tricks that you can, you know, mm-hmm. you, 
you 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 know you um you just got to do it you know you just you just got you just you have to have the passion for it you know yeah i mean sometimes i get sometimes i get right down on the floor with them i i don't i never present up on a stage i'm always down on the floor with them and some i get i get on my knees sometimes because they're you know they're usually sitting on the floor so i'll get on my knees and i'll walk on my knees like in front of them you know in back of them mm -hmm. so i'm looking at them at eye level you know and then you know you're flipping something on um, behind you on the screen so they're seeing you you're narrating it and you've got them engaged and i just don't let them go once i got them engaged it's just like one thing right after another wow. you know so, i would yeah. love to see one of yours your presentations <laughs> well but unfortunately, they won't let you video. Uh, they won't let you take pictures at a lot of these schools. Um, uh, no, they, yeah, they don't. They, um, uh, yeah, which they're very, I, very yeah, protective about having absolutely, kids online. which they should be, which they yeah. should be, yeah. But uh, yeah, they're you know they're pretty good. Sometimes though, they will uh, record you to show to students uh, later on. Like say, sometimes you'll come to a school and they say, you know, we didn't know it earlier, but the third grade is on a field trip. Could we record uh -huh. your presentation and show it to them? And I'm like, all right, but I don't want to see it on YouTube right, <laughs> afterwards. Right. Yeah. Right. So uh, those are things that they, that they do, you know, uh -huh. or maybe they show it to the kids next year, you know, that's why you yeah. don't, you know, <laughs> I don't know, but it's uh, a, <laughs> it's, it's a type of thing where, um, uh, you know, it, like I said, it, it, every school is different. Right. Every school is different. You know, usually, usually if, especially with, you know, with me coming into schools these days where, you know, I'm going all over the place and I, I have a, um, I have a presence in school, in schools that they know that I'm going to come in and, and do a very good job. They're prepared for you. You know, they'll, mm. they'll, they have it all set up. You're ready to go so that when you get there, it's, it's, um, uh, you know, the, the students are pretty good. Right. You know? uh, starting off though, you're not going to, you're not going to have that. You know? Right. Yeah. And I think, I think when you're starting out, you, you really you know, you horribleize and you, you just think of all the things that are just going to go wrong and you don't sleep the night before. And so you oh, get yeah. up and you're not on your, you feel lousy and you yep. go in there and, and I, I, I guess what, after a year or two of doing it, you start to find your rhythm. Is that. Uh, I, I, I do sleep better. Um, I don't really sleep well anyway, to begin with, but yeah. uh, when I'm on the road, I, I, I try to rest. I close my eyes and I think about my artwork. Uh, you know, I, I uh, the thing is, it's, um, uh, yeah, you're, you're going to get to, you're going to get to a point where you are tired, you know, mm -hmm. but when you do some repetitively, if you keep, you know, if you keep doing the same thing over and over again, it, it comes to you secondhand. Uh, I must say I, I do sleep, you know, better, you know, these days on the road than I used to, you know, some, sometimes I go and I get like two hours sleep one night. Wow. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because you're just, you're just wound up, you know, you just, Oh yeah. boy, what's it going to be like tomorrow? What are these kids are going to be like? Are they going to, you know, am I going to be able to engage them or, you know, am I, are they going to really, really like what I'm doing here? And, and you're going to, you, you know, you're going to, you're going to hit, um, uh, especially at the beginning, you're, you're going to do presentations that, which aren't very good until you, until you get it down. Until you get it down. Yeah. But I would say the fact that you're, you're, you're nervous or you're concerned means that's probably a reflection on, how the quality of your presentation because someone who doesn't care who's not nervous at all is probably just kind of phoning it in and not uh i would assume yeah it's um yeah you know it, i do get i do get nervous about it because like i said my my uh, real fear is losing students yeah so that's the thing that keeps me uh that gives me a shot of adrenaline i think when i'm presenting <laughs> you know you're up there and you need something you know and until but, you've done it you you just don't done, yeah yeah <laughs> yeah it, you know the, the, the thing is that you, you usually by doing it over and over again and by adding new stuff because I, I can't keep stuff the same way uh, all the time but by adding new stuff you're keeping it fresh for yourself which you have to do or else you're going to go yeah. insane but you also know some tried and true things that mm -hmm. are going to hit home with the students, you know? So you, you, you intersperse those through yeah. your presentations, you know, that, okay, this is, this got a good laugh, you know, this got the, this got them engaged, you know, this is something that they went, whoa, with, you know, right. so you, you keep those and you don't let go of them, you know, right. and then you try to, you try some new things. So basically by the time you've done, you know, like maybe 20 presentations, 30 presentations, you're going to have a pretty good outline of what you, of what works and what doesn't. And, yeah. and the thing is you got to be yourself, you know, you can't go up there and try to be uh, somebody who you're not, yeah. you know, you got, you got to take what you do and you got to believe in what you do.
And you yeah. just find the things that you're strong at and it might yeah. not be what you're doing. It might be something totally different. I found that in the beginning, I was, I was nervous about drawing in front of people. I've always been self-conscious about letting people see me, my thought you're, process. You're, you're beautiful draw. I mean, you're like my <laughs> idol, you know? <laughs> Drawings that you put up there. I'm like, how could this, this guy's got such confidence. Look at the line work. Look at the, this. Uh, yeah. I, you know, it's, I, I, I don't, I can't really explain it other than I feel like if I make a mistake, people are going, are, are seeing my brain activity in a visual do you know what i mean yes and, and i and i and the searching like painting has always been more i've been always been more confident with but the drawing has always been I, I don't want you to see my drawing until i'm done and so when i started doing school visits that was really tough because everybody said you've got to draw like that needs to be one of the things that you do because that really captures people's attention is is watching a drawing and i remember yeah. you know i can't remember what program it was on pbs when i was growing up where they they would draw and tell a story at the same time. I, I maybe you know the name of it, but I I can't remember. They would it would be like a a drawing that was happening through the whole story, and you just uh -huh. sit there watching this drawing that was basically an illustration of the story. Yeah, and I was just mesmerized. And I've talked to a lot of people that were just mesmerized. So I know that that's like a thing that people kind of get hypnotized when they see a drawing coming forth. But with kids, you can't draw too long and spend too much time on something where it's not progressing. Cause you know, I, I, one thing that I learned to do when I draw well, two things is one, I practice what I'm going to draw. This is when I first started, I'd practice so that I'd feel confident, like, Oh, I can draw this. Yeah. But the other thing was I, I always like putting eyeballs in last and I noticed that it creates this amazing tension with the kids. Cause they're like, I'll start hearing, he needs eyeballs, you know, like <laughs> where's his eyeballs. Uh, where, yeah. Where, and then it just starts this, <laughs> it just starts this wave of kids going. Yeah. And then the teachers are like, calm down, you know, like, <laughs> and then I'll say, Oh yeah, he does need eyeballs. Well, I'll, I, maybe I should put him in now. And they're like, yeah, well, I got to draw this more on the legs and more on the, the costume first, you know, yeah. so I leave them off. Anticipation, yeah. Oh yeah. boy. That just gets. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what I do is I uh, I got this one thing where um, I actually got a video of it too, where somebody did a high speed uh, a filming of me creating my beetle for students. And uh, the thing is, like when I uh, when I draw the eye in, uh, it's part of the uh, pr uh, it's part of the drawing program where I show them pixels, mm -hmm. right? So uh, you know, I, I say, okay, um, let, let's uh, let's give this thing a nice gold color eye, okay? And then you know. I said, what's the dark part of your eye called? And they go, pupil. I said, okay, so let's put the pupil in. I say, wow, you put a pupil in there. And then I, I say, okay, but uh, let's uh, let's make it shiny. What color we used to make it look shiny? So we, they say, uh, uh, they say, well, a little bit of white or whatever. And I say, okay, so I add a little white. You put the highlight in there. And I say, okay, everybody, look into my eye. Look into my eye. So you <laughs> magnify the eye up. Say, you're feeling sleepy, sleepy, sleepy. So it magnifies this eye, you know, up on the big screen so you can uh -huh. see the pixels. And they say, hey, look at this. What are the little squares called? And, you know, you'll have some kid in the back who's like a real savvy. Those are pixels. I said, that's right. There's over 300 pixels. And you go back and you pull back, pull back. And you say, yes, there's over 300 pixels in this illustration. And you say, uh-oh. We only have one eye on this beetle, right? So what do you do? And say, you can make it a Cyclops beetle. So you put the eye up in the middle, right? <laughs> said, or you could put the eye over here, right? It's holding it in his hand. It, the beetle's holding it in his hand. Or should we put it here and you have it coming out the butt, right? <laughs> it just slays them. They go, no, no, no. And they say, uh, so how do we get another uh, How do we get another eye? And they say, you copy it. I say, copy it. And, say, and if it's from another planet, and then I put a third eye on it, you know? So those are things that you kind of play around yeah, with. That's and awesome. You have you have fun, you know, you have fun and the kids are just worrying, but, but they're learning stuff as you're doing it. You know, w w when you're creating the beetle, the difference between a bug and a beetle is the way the beetles fold their wings as opposed to a bug. You know, you talk about symmetry, all those things that, uh, that as you're creating the uh, picture has educational value to it. And that's something that, you know, as if you're an artist and you say, if you're creating a book on something, um, dragons or say if your book is about fish or something like that draw a fish talk yeah. about fish biology you know make it fun you know make it make it exciting tell them tell kids something about fish that they didn't, never knew you know mm -hmm. those are things that you could incorporate as you're doing your drawing like little things that you could talk about so uh 
those are the type of things that um, I think add value to your presentation. You know, not, not many people um, uh, get up in front uh, and draw on a computer. You know, mm -hmm. most of the artists that I know will, um, they'll Drawing sketch something on a, you know, like a big poster board or whatever. Mm -hmm. But with, with, when you have a big screen in back of you that you can project something up to be, you know, 20 feet big behind you, mm -hmm. that's, that's going to grab their attention. You know, that's going to grab their attention more so than anything done on um, like chart paper or something like that. Yeah. I've seen, I've, I've actually presented uh, with several other illustrators before and I, I've seen people use like the, the butcher paper, you know, with the, the pad. Yeah. They can do quick drawings with a marker and, and I don't, that's just not me. Yeah. Um, and I've seen it work really well, but yes. I also, but I also, I do the iPad thing big on the screen and I like to, I sometimes I'll do zoom ins, like you said, you know, yeah. and you can make jokes and, and, uh, but yeah, I, 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 to me, I think if you're not drawing at least part of the time, you're, you're missing out on what makes a illustrator unique, you know? True. It's, it, it's, it's true. That, that, that was part of it that, you know, I used before I started writing was the illustration part of it, you know, showing, showing the process that you go through. Uh, and, and nowadays it's like, um, it, it's like 50, 50 right mm -hmm. now where it's, it's taking the idea uh, you know, because you're, you're the one who has taken either the idea that you've written or you're taking, you know, the author's idea and you're turning it into a story. And if it's put, if it's put together, if it's presented the right way, you could engage kids. You really, oh, you yeah. really could, you know, it's some, it's like behind the scenes. It's like, uh, you yeah. know, having them part of a movie production, you know? Well, you're doing the behind, you're doing the backstory of like, you know, your sumo kitty that, that everybody wants to know where it came from. So, so finding out where your idea came with from the cat and all that. Yeah. Those are really, I, I couldn't imagine anybody not being engaged by that sort of thing. Um, okay. So I think we've kind of hit really well the uh, kind of the, the, the contents, but what about some other logistics? And these are probably things that aren't as exciting to talk about, but necessary evils, if we're going to be a little bit comprehensive and that's like, uh, the, the business side of it, you know, you said, you mentioned that your wife does bookings and stuff. What about collecting money? Do you, you know, do you ever have any outstanding checks that sometimes I have never, to... I have never, ever been, um, uh, stiffed by a school. Uh, they've nice. always paid. Yeah. They've, uh, I've been very, very fortunate. Um, I've heard, I've heard some things, uh, I've seen some things on Facebook where other authors have had issues getting paid. Hmm. What I try to do is, uh, I, uh, I like to I like to get paid the day of. I make it uh, in my contract. Make, make sure you got a good contract. Mm -hmm. um, oh, so oh, so you you leave an invoice with them. I uh, I, and... I send them a contract that uh, you know when when everything's all settled, what day I'm going to be there. I send them a contract that that outlines um, what my fee is going to be for how many presentations, and uh, just in case there's a cancellation due to weather or sickness or something like that. Uh, you know, um, you, you, you try to, uh, resolve something where, you know, like, it, okay, so if, it, if, if it's canceled, if, uh, for some reason the school visit is canceled by, uh, weather, well, you have them sign it that they will reschedule you within nine months of, oh, uh, I have never heard this, but that is, that's really smart. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, hmm. it's part of our business. Um, hmm. also to that, uh, I'd like to be paid the day of, you know. Uh, I don't require some, some authors require a deposit. I don't require a deposit. Some people, some schools will send you deposits uh, beforehand, which is nice too. Um, uh, also to uh, everything's laid out with the, uh, with the contract, as far as like what you're going to get paid for the honorarium, also travel expenses too. Mm -hmm. Like if you um, say, if you have to drive somewhere and stay overnight uh, because you don't want to get up like three o'clock in the morning, uh, you know, and so the school would be responsible for it. Um, one of the things too is um, a lot of schools will ask you as for a flat fee. You mm -hmm. know, if you're going to travel, this is yeah. you know this is what we want. We want everything because we don't want we, you know you can't bill separately for this. Which separate. means you have to have money to book your own flight. Yeah, you have to have money to book your own flight. But points are great on your credit card. Yeah, you know, points are great. <laughs> but yeah. uh, I yeah, bet so you have a lot of miles. Yeah. Yeah. So th those are things that you have to work out. Um, what else is there? There is, uh, how many presentations that you will do? Um, 
uh, also too that a room should be darkened you know if you want it to be th yeah. th you could just lay out stuff a microphone um green m ms uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah water from greece yes uh yeah uh, a, a uh, oriental rug to present on yeah, all those things yeah no but it, it just outline things that you feel comfortable with that they'll that they'll know and then you get a signed copy back and uh you know it depends on w what your payment arrangements are sometimes you do have to wait you know especially um, some uh, districts that i visit um i will get paid maybe about a week or two after i visit but those mm -hmm. are things that you know beforehand okay you know so it, it, every everybody's different uh, you try to work out uh, the best that you can mm -hmm. and uh, uh, go that way. The, the, uh, the thing is, I, I, I know that, um, uh, you know, being, uh, n not having a tude, you know, <laughs> it, it goes a long way. Yeah. It, it really, really goes a long way. It, uh, you know, being easy to work with. Yeah. It goes a long way. Because sometimes I have noticed that the teachers are feeling you out for if you have an attitude. Like, they're like, okay, this person is coming in and sometimes they know what you're getting paid. And yeah. it's, it's all, and in their mind, it's a lot more than what they're getting paid. Um, for, a, for, especially for a day, um, you know, yeah. and, and they don't want a prima donna, you know? <laughs> no, but, uh, you know, a lot of times there are prima donnas out there, you know, <laughs> there, there, there are, there, there's a whole gamut, you know, there's a, there's a lot of, um, a lot of people who are, um, you know, they're they want things done a certain way you know and sometimes it can be hard to work with and uh, i've heard this you know about you know a lot of different um, authors who they say you know he came they, they he or she came here and uh they were they were just not very nice to work with they, mm. they weren't you know they were they're were okay with the kids you know but they weren't uh, they weren't very nice to us or sometimes they'll go there and they just weren't <laughs> they weren't even good with the kids yeah. You know, yeah. So the the, the thing is, and a, and a lot of the teachers are looking forward to your visit for the the lunch because then you, they they want to <laughs> hang out, right, and have a good time. And, and, sometimes, and yeah, sometimes you'll have a lunch with the teachers, which is great. Sometimes the teachers will, uh, like when I was in Guam. Oh, Guam was unbelievable. They, uh, uh, I visited three schools a day. So you get to the school, and every teacher would bring like a dish in. So oh, you wow. go and you ate, you presented. You came back, you had dessert and you autographed. Then you went to the next school, same thing. Eat, present, dessert, autograph. Go to the third <laughs> school, same day. Eat, present, dessert, autograph. And then by the end of the day, I, I go back to my hotel room. And I was just, you know, it was like a beach <laughs> whale. <laughs> yeah, that was it. Yeah, so, sometimes they do that. And, and they're so nice. They bring in, you know, you, you come into the school and you say, do you guys eat like this every day? And they say, no, 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 it's because you're here. And you feel, yeah. you feel kind of special. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's really nice. Sometimes you, just, um, sometimes you just want time to yourself too. You know, if you've been, you know, if you've been talking to kids for the whole morning, sometimes you just need to decompress a little bit. Yeah. You need to, I, I, sometimes I just go to the restroom, you know, close the door, whew, yeah. you know, do one of those. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, those are those are some of the things you're uh, you'll face. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing all this. I mean, this is you're very generous to to give us a, kind of a a view into that that world and uh, and I I knew that you you know this is this is one of the main things that you do and uh, can you last thing can you speak to like how you think it affects your book sales like it like let's say you weren't doing any school visits. Um, and and writing and illustrating and and maybe speak to the idea that if you weren't doing school visits you would have more time to create but maybe you like the balance of doing school visits and the amount of creating you're doing i don't know like yeah it's a it's a uh it, it's it's a tough one because a lot of times i uh and you know this probably too when you when you're away from your your desk for a while you get a little rusty mm -hmm. it, it, you know so i the thing is like i try to I try to keep my iPad with me these days so I could draw a lot more. But um, the thing is, uh, it depends on uh, finding the balance that you, that you enjoy. Um, you know, I've, I've done a lot of school visits because you know what, I, I put three kids through college, you know, yeah. and uh, you know, it's, it's not cheap. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so and both my wife and I have put three kids through college. So it's, it, you know, we got to keep the money coming in. As far as the book sales go, I think, um, I think it helps. I, I definitely do. I think it helps. I could see from my royalties, uh, 
like uh, from uh, January to uh, June, you know, it's it, sales are good because mm -hmm. I'm speaking at schools. I'm selling a lot of books. Um, also, my books are offered by Scholastic, too. And you probably have had that, too, where, mm -hmm. you know, the uh, the book clubs have uh, uh, picked up your work like Firefly or whatever. Why? Well, because schools have, you know, they they have you visit. You know, you're, all of a sudden your book is pretty much in every school uh, on the front page in every school in the United States that get the Scholastic Book Clubs. So that that's another good thing there too. But um, there's a balance that you that you have to find. Right now, my, my balance is may, maybe skewed a little bit too much towards school visits. I would like to get more into, you know, maybe uh, just uh, creating more and, you know, uh, being at home more to, to create. Um, I think in a couple more years, I'll be able to do that. Um, it's, uh, uh, I can't, I can't see doing a book without showing to students either. You know, that's, that's the type of thing where I'll like a, a book I did years ago called bear alert, bear alert was basically shown to 60,000 kids before wow. the book was published and it was shown wow. in sketches. So as I was showing the book, uh, or the sketches, you know, things would go over well and some things wouldn't go over well. So I'd go back and I'd redo like a, a section of it. And then I showed the next day and maybe you went over a little bit better, but still not there. So the thing is like I had, uh, I had the book down pretty well before I actually got it published. And plus you're showing it to a lot of students too. So when the book comes out, the schools want it. The schools want, want the book because they've seen your, they've seen your presentations. They want the book. So good sales happen like that mm -hmm. uh, uh, through, you know, going out and singing your songs beforehand, yeah. you know? So yeah. that, that's something that, um, I mean, you're kind of like a rock star, really. In, I mean, that's what they tour to sell the. Absolutely, yeah. I was. Uh, I just saw Lord Huron um, last week, and uh, up <laughs> in Portland, Maine, and uh, you know they they had something on their uh, website where they were talking about trying songs out, you know, before they actually uh, re uh, recorded them, and uh, <laughs> you know they're saying, yeah, we tried this song this song off in a big venue. It didn't go over very well. <laughs> but we tried it off in a coffee house. We slayed them. It was awesome, you know? So they're thinking like, well, how, how do we play this then to a bigger audience? You know, so you 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 learn things by by showing, you know? Yeah. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not that um, talented where I could just sit down and create a story without getting some type of feedback from it. Yeah. I'm, I'm just not that talented. I can't I can't do that. Some people could sit down and they could they could write a story, they could illustrate a book. And boom, you know, there it's it's doing great, you know. Not me. I'm I'm one of those that I need the I need the reinforcement that it's actually connecting with students. Mm. You know. So that's uh that's one of the things that uh you know that's great school visits bring to me. So we I've been ignoring the chat simply because I can't do both. I can't pay attention, <laughs> I can't keep engaged. So I apologize to the people that have been here, but there is a question that did pop up that I, I think we missed that is a is a is a really good question by Beth. And she's saying, do you, how, basically, how do you find schools? How do you, how, if someone were beginning, like I, you're a veteran now and the schools are finding you, but mm -hmm. if you were starting out, I know there are directories that people put out there. Uh, what do you think? Uh, well, the first thing uh, to do is to um, uh, offer to uh, come in and present at a library mm -hmm. or at a school. Because you got to you got to develop your your presentation. You know, yeah. it's not like you know, oh, geez, I got a book out and I'm going to go speak to 300 students. Right. That's not going to work. You know, you've right. got you got to start um, you got to start small. small. You gotta, yeah. yeah, you got to you got to start. Um, uh, you know, even bring kids in from the neighborhood, <laughs> bring them in for story hour or whatever. Uh, it's it's just like starting off. Um, you know, go to a library, say, look, you know, I got a book out. I'd love to do a story time here. And you know what? They, they would be more than happy to, uh, you know, to bring you in sometime and do it. Uh, and then maybe offer um, a story time at, uh, or, or offer to go to a school, a local school and do a presentation to them. Uh, schools would love to have you. I mean, they're, they're kind of strapped for time these days mm -hmm. because of so much of the curriculum that they have to get done. But I'm sure that you'll be able to go into a school and they, they would say, yes, we'll welcome you with open arms. Come on in, maybe even speak to a classroom, so on and so, so forth. So th that's how you do it. And then after you do that, after you have a book out and you feel pretty good, go to uh, try to get into a reading conference, hmm. uh, a reading conference or even better, the librarian conferences. Because yeah. the librarians are just awesome. Uh, 
Well, and know. they're the ones that are looking for authors for their school visits. Most, so. most of the time they are. Yeah, most yeah. of the time they are. Sometimes you'll be uh, uh, the, uh, uh, what is it? The uh, reading specialist will be somebody who gets in touch with you. Sometimes it'll be somebody from the PTO or the PTA yeah. or, or whatever. Those, those will be the people. Uh, but for the most part, yes, it is the librarians. But what I found out with the librarians is that they are um, very open-minded to mm -hmm. uh, seeing an author, you know, and, and reading conferences are like that too. But yeah. librarians, they are, you know, they're like your choir, you know, they just love you. And, you know, and then you, you know, from there, you know, they're going back to their schools and saying, you know, they do school visits and why, why don't we bring them in, you know, so on and yeah. so forth. So that's, that's a good way to go. And it's a process, you know, it's a process where, um, you know, some people, you know, take to it really quickly. Some people are very, uh, outgoing and, 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 you know, could, could do it. But mm -hmm. in most cases, like for a person like me, it takes a while to get going to do something would, like that. Would you say that most of your school visits now are coming from referrals from, from just other schools that you've, you know, killed it at? Um, yeah. Yeah. From, um, you know, from different States, you know, like I've, uh, you know, I got a, a strong presence in the Midwest, uh, Texas, uh, up and down the East coast. Mm -hmm. I go, um, and then every once in a while, like, um, let's see, West, like, uh, I'll go up to like Wyoming or California every once in a while, but, but mainly I would say it's like the East coast and Midwest where I, I do a lot of my, uh, my work. Mm -hmm. And the thing is like, like I said, once you, once you start to present at some, uh, schools and word gets around that you're doing, that you do a good job and that you're easy to work with, then those are the things that, you know, really, really help your, your career along, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, another thing too is getting a book on the um, uh, the state um, uh, book award list, mm. and you've you've probably had that too, right? Yeah. Some of your books have been up on this, uh, or if you win a state book uh, uh, award, you know, like uh, uh, a couple of my books have won uh, state book awards. Yeah, so they're you know they've been read by pretty much every kid, <laughs> every yeah. kid in the state, you know, so everybody knows you. You yeah, know, so that that's another thing too. So it's a it's a process. It's a process of starting, uh, you know, one step at a time. You know. Yeah. So well, that's yeah. cool. So, um, now you've also done some re a lot of repeat schools, right? Or they have you back? Yeah, yeah. Uh, when the uh, when the students uh, uh, cycle out of the school, basically, you know, if you go into a school, say you speak from uh, uh, first grade to fourth grade, okay, first grade, second grade, third grade, and fourth grade. Well. Um, and depending on how you do it too, uh, they'll, they'll have you come back in four years or something like that, four or five years. And that that's happened a lot to me, you know, nice. because, uh, and that tells you you're doing a good job and that you're easy. Yeah, to if work they remember you. you. Yeah. Yeah. If they, if, if they remember you four or five years later, yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know that you've, uh, that you've, you've done a good job. And, yeah. uh, and plus, you know, uh, librarians talk, um, uh, all, all the time, you know, they're always sharing stuff, you know, there's, uh, there's so much going on these days with, uh, with literature, you know, it's a golden, mm -hmm. it's a golden age of literature. It's a crazy age of literature, you know, that, uh, everybody's saying, well, I read this, I read that, you know, uh, with the internet, there's, uh, you know, things you get like good reads, you know, uh, mm -hmm. there's, uh, there's people who have, uh, Facebook pages that are geared towards, uh, uh, librarians and stuff like that. Those are things that, uh, you know, you, um, you, you get on or like, uh, like with you too, like, you, you know, you have a great presence on Facebook. So, you know, you have a lot of friends who follow you or people who come on. So that's another way to get your, your work out there, your books, you know, mm -hmm. generating excitement for your stories, um, posting drawings, you know, yeah. giving little tidbits of a story that you're working on. Those are, those are things that you could do. Yeah. There's all those, all those little things kind of add up to your presence and, you know, what, what you want to intend to do as far as school visits or, you know, selling books. It, it definitely is uh, very, very helpful, more helpful these days than, any other time that I can remember. That's for sure. Well, it's a rough business and there's a lot of competition and yes. And yep. boy, so anything that you can do to really promote your books and, and the cool thing with you writing and illustrating is, um, you know, you're getting paid double what someone who's just illustrating is. So you have even more, I would, I would think you'd have even more incentive to go out there and want to really push your books because the better they do the better. Yeah. You, do, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's good. You know, I, um, you know, sometimes I think about getting a different publisher, you know, uh, thing is, I, I just really don't have time to get another publisher because, mm. you know, between the school visits and creating a story, uh, you know, maybe one of these days I'll, you know, switch around a little bit. But, um, 
it, you know, it, it, it never hurts uh, to go out and, and promote your own books. It, it, it never does. Yeah. You yeah. know, some people are masters of it. You know, they're just, yeah. uh, they're just, they're great. They're always writing about it. Um, you know, uh, being an, a, an illustrator as well as an author, I, you know, authors, I feel have more time to write and more time to promote because as you know, working on a artwork for a book, it's very labor intensive, mm -hmm. very labor intensive. I mean, you're putting so much more hours into illustrating a book than you are writing the story, writing a story. Sometimes you could do it. Like, I don't know. <laughs> it depends. <laughs> I've written books like in, you know, like a day or two or even a week uh -huh. or two, you know, <laughs> and boom, you move on to something else, you know, if you're an author, but if you're an illustrator, okay, you, you wrote the story. Now you got to put the pictures to it. Yeah. So, you know, there's uh, uh you know, that will take away from your uh, promotions that will take away from uh, other things that, you know, uh, just being an author will do. You know, I, I think uh, there's a lot of people who are very um, well connected on Twitter and on Instagram and on Facebook who are authors who are just putting stuff out there all the time, you know, who tweet like incessantly, you know, and they're developing a, a very good uh, presence on the uh, Internet. And uh yeah, if you have the time, that's something that you could do too. So yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of different things. Well, thank you so much for um, for lending your time and for being willing to do this on such short notice. Um, I know Simona will be happy to. <laughs> if, uh, she's probably not watching now, but she'll probably she'll I'll send her a link and. Uh, okay. Um, will this be up on uh, Google uh, or up? On yeah, it'll be on YouTube. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. Unfortunately. Okay. And I don't understand why YouTube does this, but all the wonderful comments that have been happening on here don't show up when it's like they're they're on the live part of it, but they won't be on the oh, really? live version. Yeah, I don't know why they do that because it's like there's a kind of a gold mine that happens, and I always want to go back and and read through them. You, I think they they're I think they appear like on the side where you can read them as the video is happening, but they don't right. appear in the regular chat but whatever well if they uh, want uh, you know if they want to tweet me or uh send me something i'd be more than happy to uh answer anybody's questions uh, awesome. that they may have or talk to them uh i'd be more than happy to do that link to your site um in the description but it, it, do you want to do you want to plug anything else or do you want to have them contact you anywhere else or is it just it, can they get you through your site uh yeah yeah or, or email yeah they could email me my emails on my site they could do that um I'm not sure how else they could instant message me too on um, Facebook, I would imagine. And if I'm losing you here, something's falling over. <laughs> All right. You're probably up for that, but they'll probably have to book for 2019. Yeah, yeah, that's pre pretty much what we're doing right now. But uh, I could hardly hear you. Are you there? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you're kind of going in, in and out. Well, it's a good, probably a good time to end it then. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Great. It's uh, it's been my pleasure talking to you, and uh, thank you for again for doing this. Appreciate well, it. Meet in person sometime. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> if you're ever uh, if you're ever in Boston, let me know. I will. You got a place to stay. Awesome. All right. Hey, thanks a lot, David. Okay, you take and care, well. You too. Goodbye, everybody.